we are now ready to proceed with creating an instance of an assembly that would be the next step after creating the geometry and assigning the cross section so we open up the assembly tree we open the instances and simply accept the defaults um, of creating an instance from this part next step is to create a static analysis step you double click on the steps and accept the default procedure which is static general down here name your step something uh, descriptive which I'm calling sample trust static and press continue uh, you notice you're given a screen uh, for the typical linear elastic static analysis you don't need to do anything I would simply click on OK and proceed. However, open the field output requests uh, which would be um, this item here then open up the field output 1 and the two items are worth noting here are the strains and contacts that you want to uncheck they are really not applicable to linear elastic uh, static analysis so again open up the field output one uncheck strains and contacts and click on OK you don't do anything else at this point we proceed down and creating loads and boundary conditions you notice we want to apply the vertical load at this corner up here and we want to restrain the two endpoints up and down along the vertical line here so I'm gonna go ahead double click on the loads and you will get the um, uh, create load icon in this case is going to be a mechanical concentrated force that we are applying so we leave that alone and we simply call that a vertical uh, load and um, perhaps 10 kilo Newton to describe how much it is we'll say continue in the prompt region it asks you to uh, select a point we highlight that point as you hover over it it'll change shape click on it that is the left mouse click and say done and you see the edit load dialog box appearing uh, CF1 and CF2 uh, they signify X and Y directions so we don't need to worry about CF1 under CF2 we apply 10 e to the 3 again remember we're uh, working with the Newtons uh, and the negative sign means that we want to apply the load in the downward direction we'll say OK you notice the vector that uh, represents the load under boundary conditions you double click the boundary conditions the dialog appears we're gonna call that uh, fixed ends but before we do that you notice the type of boundary condition defaults to symmetry anti-symmetry and cast ray uh, we're going to switch that to displacement uh, rotation not to clutter the view with all six degrees of freedom restraints um, and then let's call that fixed ends for the name of the boundary conditions and continue the prompt region asks you to select the regions uh, we pick the lower corner uh, holding the shift key on the keyboard or we hold the upper one uh, we pick the upper one as well and we'll say done and you see the edit boundary condition appears um, u1 u2 are fully restrained those are the x and y displacements we don't need to worry about the rotation about the third axis or about the z-axis we'll leave that alone again to prevent the clutter because we know uh, from our understanding of the truss element that the only active degrees of freedom are x and y um, directions nothing else no rotations of any kind involved so we'll say OK at this point you notice the triangles symbolizing X and Y restraints appear I'm gonna zoom out a bit so you can see that a little bit better and then the next step would be we change the module up here from the load to mesh and be sure to change the object that you're going to mesh from assembly to part otherwise you'll see a complaint screen and uh, next step would be to uh, assign element type the icon the fourth icon from the top um, assign element type select the regions I'm gonna click 
somewhere up here and hold the left mouse button and drag uh, to pick the entire geometry and say done and the dialog box that appears is going to ask you the type of element that you want to pick notice the default is for beam we'll pull down on the menu here and pick the last item which is truss uh, note the description of the element which is a two node linear 2d truss which is what we want and we'll say OK and then done uh, next item would be seed the edge that is to tell the program how many elements per edge you want this being a truss element having constant stress and strain uh, it doesn't help at all if you go with more than one element so I'm going to seed the edges by drag and uh, selecting everything and say done and I'm gonna pick simply uh, the seeds by number and the number of elements will be one and we'll say OK uh, notice the significance of the squares that is going to tell you where the nodes have been placed and to see the nodes and elements uh, what we're gonna do is that we're going to mesh the part uh, it's asking you to, is it okay to mesh the part we'll say yes and then go under view part display options and the dialog box for part display options uh, go under the mesh tab and activate or check show node labels and show element labels and say OK you'll notice the node and element labels appear albeit not very big but uh, that's node 1 node 2 node 3 and element 1 and element 2 down here so that is the creation of the um, model itself and next step would be the solution and the post-processing.